Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Les Brown's Motivational Monday Night Call, your place for motivation and inspiration by world-renowned speaker, author, and coach, Mr. Les Brown. We are so excited that you have found time to join us for this Motivational Monday Night Call. This is a part of Mr. Brown's way of helping to inspire the greatness inside of you as he is determined to create over 100,000 voices of hope. My name is Dr. Stacey N.C. Grant. I will be your host tonight. And as Mr. Brown travels the globe inspiring and changing lives, he entrusts his platinum speakers to monitor this platform and to be able to share what he has taught, what he has inspired, and how he's allowed us to be ambassadors of this work of hope. So tonight, I get to introduce to some of you some have heard him before, but get ready, everybody, for none other than the CEO of Randolph Unlimited Inc. This is a professional training and consultant firm specializing in leadership, teamwork, motivation, neurolinguistic programming, and that's the study of communication. He's written successful books entitled Staying Strong Through the Storm and Leadership 911, How to Lead During Times of Change, Challenge, and Chaos, as well as being a contributor author to the Amazon number one best-selling book entitled World Class Speaking in Action. He's a co-creator with Les Brown of the CD program, Unlock the Secrets to Your Greatness. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you one of Les Brown's platinum speakers, the renowned Wade Randolph, leadership and productivity strategist, who we affectionately call the Moore Guy. Wade, are you there? Yes, I am, Stacy. How are you? I am great and grateful to hear your voice, excited about our call tonight, and I know you have a message that will inspire, so I'm taking out my pen and paper so I can take my notes and turn it over to you to take it away, my brother. Thank you, my sister. I want to welcome everyone that's on the call tonight, especially our first-time listeners, because you are the ones that are looking to make a difference not only in your life, but in the lives of others. I want to also send a special shout-out to the students at Strayer University. I had the pleasure to speak with them a few weeks ago on how to plus themselves. Also, I want to just make you aware, Mr. Brown, if you're in the shouting area or driving area of Richmond, Virginia, Mr. Brown's going to be in the area where he is part of the platform of Staying Motivated that will be in the Richmond, Virginia, Wednesday Tickets are free, so if you have questions, please log on to Stay Motivated and support Mr. Brown in his endeavor as he brings out the greatness in all of us. Tonight, I want to talk to you about let your light shine. Write that down. Let your light shine. And I say that from a different space tonight because I'm in a, a space where there seems to be a lot of darkness that's going on in our world. And I live in Richmond, Virginia, but if you've read or if you've seen the news a few weeks ago, a young man decided to take out his gun and shoot and kill two news anchors. That's only 60 miles away from me. And then I read about where a few weeks ago someone ran into a movie theater and started shooting up the theater. And there seems to be a lot of darkness. And then this morning, what really drove this home for me, I got a call from a lieutenant at the police station. And she said, Mr. Randolph, are you available Tuesday? I said, I'm not sure. Why is that? She said, because we had two teenagers, 15 years old, to shoot in the apartment complex, and they killed each other. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in a time of darkness. And I asked my wife over the weekend, I said, baby, do you want to go to the movie? She said, no. She said, I'm going to see the movie, but I'm scared of what might happen. And here's what I want you to think about what type of darkness is going on in your city. See, Richmond is not strange because it seems like darkness is happening throughout our cities. And now we must be willing not to live like this. I don't want to live having to look over my shoulder. I don't want to live being concerned to send my wife to the store. I don't want to live when I send my kids to college to wonder what's going to happen if they're going to return. 
How do you want to live? I'm not willing to live like that. And here's why I say to you tonight, let your light shine. We must be willing to let our light shine. What does that mean, Wade? Tonight, we must be willing to bring back the light in our world, not be willing to live out of fear. See, if you're a coach, then you've got to be willing to coach someone to bring the light back into their life. If you have a book now, you've got to be willing to let that book and write it, to be willing to bring the light out in someone's life. If you are a speaker, now it's time to speak, to give people hope to bring that light back. We must be willing to let our light shine. And I say that because, you know, I get on the phone sometimes, I hear Mr. Brown say that he's going to train a thousand voices of hope, and I wonder why does he say that. But now I understand because we're in a dark place, and we've got to be willing to let our light shine. I understand why my mom used to say that sometimes you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Let me ask you, aren't you sick and tired of what's happening in our neighborhood? And the only way to correct that is we've got to be willing to let our light shine. Now, I know what you're saying, Wade, things will change. Yeah, I understand that. But here's what I know. Things won't change until we decide that they must change. When we decide to come together, when we decide to use our talents, when we decide to let our light shine in these dark times. You know, it's interesting now. 20 years ago, I decided to move from the city of Richmond. I was thinking that maybe I could get away from some of the chaos and violence that was happening on inner city. But isn't it interesting how darkness always seems to follow you, that you can't get away from it? What's going on in your neighborhood, in your city? And then I got a call one evening. And when I looked at the caller ID, it said, Richmond Camp 13 Prison. Now, I know about you, but I don't look forward to getting calls like that. And I picked up the phone, and there was Warden Johnson on the other line. He said, oh, Mr. Randolph, are you a speaker? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, I want you to do something, but before you answer, I want you to really think about it. He said, we've called a lot of people, and... They've turned us down, so I'm hoping you would be the person that we can talk to, that we can get some help from, sir. Isn't it interesting that sometimes people will call you and they don't even know you to ask for your help? And here's what I want to ask you and what you think about. Who is it that doesn't even know you that's asking for some help? It might be that coworker that's next to you. It might be... That young boy that's walking down the street that passes you every day, it just might even be the person next to you that is just asking for some help to let your light be in their life. And I said, well, what do you want? He says, we want someone to come in and talk with the inmates and give them some insight of what they can do when they get released, of what's possible for them, of what they can see for their future. And I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm not really, and he said, Mr. Randolph, will you just think about it? And I said, sure, I'll think about it. I'll give you a, a call tomorrow. And I hung up the phone. But let me be honest with you. I had already made up my mind. I wasn't going, wasn't interested, wasn't even trying to think about going into a prison, talking to guys, bubble and Big Sean, William, and John. No, see, here's why. I just wasn't, I didn't think that was the area I was supposed to go. And you have to ask yourself, what area are you supposed to be in? What area are you supposed to be in to use your gift? What area are you supposed to be in to use your talent? What area are you supposed to be in to let your light shine, to make a difference in other people's lives? But for me, at that time, I wasn't interested in going. And I told my wife, I said, you know, can you believe he would call and ask me? I'm not interested in doing that. And she said, hmm, I'm surprised to hear you say that. And I said, what do you mean? 
And she said, you're not scared, are you? Isn't it interesting how our wives can see through our stuff? And I said, no, I'm not scared. I don't, you know I'm not scared. And she said, you know something, baby? You need to sit down and check yourself and think about it. Because didn't someone help you in your times of darkness, in your time of need? And she really made me think, and I want you to think tonight, who is it that helped you in your time of darkness, in your time of need, in your time where you can see a light in the darkness that you were going through? And we've all been there. We've all experienced that. For me, it was a guy by the name of Sam Plush. See, I'm a project kid. 2112 Red Street, Creighton Court. And when I used to live in the projects, mom used to say, boy... Don't go out there tonight. There's too much police around, too many people shooting. I don't, I don't want anything to happen to you. And Sam Plush had me to work for him while I was coming out of house, high school. A little restaurant by the name of Triangles, if you've ever been in Richmond before. Smallest restaurant in the city. And I remember one Saturday night where the guys came around and said, Hey, Mosquito, that's what they used to call me. Come on, man, ride with us. We're going to have some fun tonight. That's what they used to say. Now I said, hold on, man, I'm going to be there in a few minutes. And Sam Plush walked to me and said, young boy, don't want you hanging with those boys. Isn't it interesting how older people can be more wise than you are? But see, I was young. I was out there, was ready to run the streets. And he said, young boy, young boy, don't hang with those boys. They have to know good. You're not uh not looking to do anything. And I said, oh, Mr. Plush, come on, man, give me a break. You don't have to tell me all of that. I said, we're just going to have some fun. I said, young boy, I'm telling you, don't hang with him tonight. I don't feel good about that, young man. And I said, I'm going anyway. I don't care what you say. And he walked to me like a wise owl, and he said, how much is your life worth? How much is your life worth? Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we've got to remember who helped us. And we've got to ask the question of people that's going through the darkness. How much is their life worth? And what can we do to help them through that darkness? What light can we bring into their life? Maybe it's just a few kind words. Maybe it's just not saying anything but listening. Maybe it's just telling them that they can do okay. And we all have had a plush, Mr. Sam Plush, in our lives. And you, now it's your time to give back. And I thought about that. And I went to that prison. Didn't know what I was going to say. Didn't know what type of environment this would be. Didn't know how these young men res respond. I just didn't know. And sometimes when you're called to use your gift, you won't know how to act. You won't know what you will do. You won't know what the next step, but here's what I want to tell you tonight. If you take that next step, then the universe will give you what you need. Write this down. Valerie Parker says it so well. She says, when you're in alignment with your assignment, the universe gives you what you need. But yeah, let, me, let me break this down to you. I don't want to get biblical on you, but it says walk by faith and not by sight. Sometimes you're going to have to take that step to let your light shine. And when I walked into that prison, see, if you've ever been in a prison, and when you're going down the road to get to the prison, it's not the barbed wire that you see that they house the prisoners in. That's not the scary part. It's not the guards that you see walking from gate to gate. No, that, that is not the scary part. It's not the, when you come into the gate in the office and they frisk you down. No, that's not the scary part. Mm -mm, no, no. Then they have you sign a release that says, if anything happens, it's on you. Mm -mm, that's not the scary part. See, the scary part is when you walk in those doors and they shut behind you and you can't get out. See, that's the scary part because you know your freedom has been taken away. And I walked in there, those gates slamming, and I said, oh, my goodness. Whew, I don't know what to do. 
Maybe I've made a mistake. Maybe this isn't what I'm supposed to do. Maybe this isn't what I'm supposed to be. See, when you let your light shine, here's what I know. That sometimes when you're getting ready to take a step and use your gift, use your talent, you're going to doubt yourself. I know that. We've all had doubt. But here's what I say. You've got to be willing to take the next step. Not because it's not going to be a head thing. It's a heart thing. Evelyn Polk, one of our platinum sisters, says, follow your heart because that's where your treasure will lie. Sometimes you've got to let your light shine, not by using your head, but using your heart. And I walked into that room, an 8 by 12 room, looked like a shoebox, and I saw there were probably, looked like over 100 young men crowded into this shoebox of a cell. And it was so hot in there, it felt like 100 degrees. I had to take my jacket off, I was dripping sweat, and these guys were walking back and forth. And they was going, hey, Henry, hey, Jim. And there's always someone in jail, Big John. A big bubble. And here's why I noticed at the back of the room there was a guy, and they called him Bubba. And Bubba, let me give you an idea. He was a guy that looked like the Incredible Hulk. He had muscles as big as your head, and he was walking back and forth, and everybody kind of got out of his way when he walked. And I sat there, and I just, I don't know, I just started to wonder, what would I do? What would I say to these young men? Didn't know. I just didn't know. I wonder, you know, what is it that they want to hear? What can I say to them that make a difference? Sometimes you're going to wonder, what can you say? But you know, again, sometimes you just got to follow your heart. And I got up, and as soon as I got up, the young little man that led me in, the, one of the guards, he slammed the door shut, and he just kind of eased on out. And you know, at that time, I really started to sweat. Let me, let me tell you something. I'm already bald, but you ever seen a bald head guy sweat? It is not pretty. And I was sweating because I didn't know what I would say to him. Didn't know what to do. And then I just got up. <laughs> and they gathered around me, and I said, young man, I don't know why I'm here today, but I just want to tell you what got you here won't get you to where you want to go. That sometimes you've got to look and put the past behind you and keep moving towards your dreams. Sometimes you've got to be willing to say, I'm wrong, but I'm no longer willing to be wrong because I can make it right. And you've got to be willing to move forth. Let me tell you, I don't know where that came from. I don't know. But I know that I was telling them something that they needed to hear. I know that I was telling them something that would move them forth. I know that I was telling them something that would make a difference. And here's why I say to you tonight, you have a gift, you have a talent, you have a uniqueness that if you use it, you can make a difference to someone. People are looking for light in this time of darkness. Your words can move someone forth. Your words can lift someone up and make them take the next step. Your words can shine light in a time of darkness. And by the time I finish, they just stood there for a moment. And then as they dispersed, someone said, thank you, man. Someone said, hey, you know, I'm glad you were here. Thank you. And they said that some of them just said it's just to be courteous. Wish I could have done more, but I couldn't do any more. And here's what I say. When you use your gift, when you use your talent, when you give that speech, when you write that book, you're going to get to the people that really need it. And then someone said, hey, hey, man, hey. And I stopped for a moment. And that's when the crowd started clear, said, hey, and then that was Bubba, the big guy, muscles as big as your head, and he walked like the hog and said, hey, man, I want to talk to you. And just then that little guard, he slammed the gate again, and he kind of took a step back, and I said, oh, I don't know what's going to happen here. And he came right to me, right into my face, I almost budded me, said, hey, man, hey, I want to tell you something. 
I'm going to tell you something, man. And he took a step close, nose to nose, eye to eye, brow to brow. He said, I want to tell you, man. I want to tell you. I want to thank you for your words, man. I want to thank you for... I heard you tonight, man. I heard you tonight, man. Did you know something? I wish I had other people that said the same thing to me like you did, man. If, if I did, I wouldn't be in here. I want to thank you, man. That's all I want to do. And I walked out of there. And I know I had, I know, I know I had made a difference in Bubba's life. And I walked out of there, part of me was overjoyed because I had given him the light. I had given him something more that he could see of what he was. I had given him a light in his life that he could step forth. I had given him a light that he has greatness inside of him. So let me tell you, there are some people that's waiting on your voice to tell them. They've got something inside of him. And if they don't do it, then you, if you don't do it, then they'll be left behind. And I walked out of there and I was excited. I was overjoyed. But a part of me was sad. See, because that night, I had only, Bobo was the only person I got to. He was the only person. And here's why I realized there's some people that's waiting on you because Bubba was my assignment, and those people are your assignment. They're waiting for you to give that speech that will light their life. They're waiting on you to write that book to bring the light back into their eyes. They're waiting on you to give them coaching that will make a difference in their life. They waited on you. Bubba was my assignment. Who is your assignment? Who is it that's waiting on you? Who's waiting on your book? Who's waiting on your voice? Who's waiting on your talent to bring it out? And if you don't bring it out, they'll never see the light. But here's the big thing. If you don't bring it out, they won't only be lost, but the people around them will be lost. And we'll lose generations to come just because you won't let your light shine. Some people are waiting on you. And when I say that, when we let our light shine, then maybe you can move someone forth. Maybe you can make a difference. Maybe you can just give hope where there is none. So here's what I say to you tonight. Let your light shine. If we're going to get rid of the darkness that's in our world. I had the pleasure a few weeks ago to go with my wife to a family reunion, and it was a great reunion. You know, there's some things about family that you should not put away. There's some traditions that we must hold on to, like bringing together the family and seeing each other, how we grow, how we are part of it each other. It was interesting because the older gentleman was 99 years old, a matriarch of the family, and he sat there and you could see that time had weathered him. He had lost both of his legs. He sat in the wheelchair now. He sat in the back of the room. And they said, Mr. Kane, Mr. Kane, do you have anything to say to the, to the family? And he just sat there looking like he was asleep. And said, well, you know, I want to thank everybody in the family from coming far to or near to us to be with us. You know, there's uh, something that happens when we all get together. There's a new resonance, a new spirit that we all happen to get together. So I wish Mr. King could have said a few words. And he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. And they said, Mr. Kane, we thought you were asleep. And he said, no, no, I'm, you know, when you get old, you just got to get your mind together. He said, here's what I want to say. He said, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, this is my family. 
say, I don't care how smart you are, I don't care how college educated you are, I don't care how cute you think you are. I want you to remember, we are all family. And here's what I took from Mr. Kane. You see, it's not a black race, it's not a white race, it's not a China race. See, we are all part of the human race. And we want, as Andrew Young said, we all just want to live together, live on our terms. But in order to do that, we've got to be willing to hold each other up and let our light shine. So in closing, use your gift. Maybe it's a book you want to write. Maybe it's a speech you've got to give. Maybe it's just talking to someone. Someone's waiting on you to let your light shine. Stacy? Wow, wow, wow. The more guy, Mr. Wade Randolph. I don't think there's anybody on this call tonight who does not want to make their light shine as a result of listening to your message. Absolutely amazing. Thank you for your voice, for your story, for you being able to inspire inspire us all to think differently about what it is that we have and who is waiting to receive it. Wayne, how can everyone stay in contact with you? Well, I'm on Facebook. I love to hear what you're going to do to let your light shine. If you will just hit me up on Facebook at wade at themoreguy.com. I'm on Facebook. Send me an email, wade at themoreguy.com. Dot com. I'm on LinkedIn, so please look. I'm the only more guy out there, and I'd like to hear how you're using your light and letting it shine. So hit the more guy up. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, Wade, I know we have another commitment shortly, but do you have a moment or two for us to take a few callers and see what they are letting shine and what you've inspired them to let their light shine in their particular areas in their life right now, if they just have a question or a comment for you. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, here's the rules. I told you, unless Brown is traveling, he sends only the best. You heard an amazing message tonight, and what I need you to do is when I put the call in Q&A mode, you'll press star six to unmute your line if you have a comment and or question for Mr. Wade Randolph. All callers are unmuted. Unmuted. All callers are muted and may unmute themselves by pressing star six. Hello? Okay, go right ahead with your comment or question. Yes, I just wanted to say um, I'm I'm Ananda. I'm from Granada Hills, California, and he said just what I needed to hear. There is a talk that I've been hesitating to give that I'm going to give, and I thank him for that. Well, I thank you for being here. I'm glad you got value. Thank you. Awesome. Right. Thank you for showing up on the call. All right. We have some more time. Just a few more minutes. Star six to unmute yourself and your question or comment for Mr. Wade Randolph. Mr. Wade, this is Dion out of Tampa. How are you, Dion? I'm doing phenomenal. I just want to thank you, sir. Really bless my soul on tonight, simply just through your testimony, sharing your story. Because I see what it pretty much lines up to exactly what I've been going through. And I uh, guess God speaks to people. He let us know that sometimes it ain't about us, but it's about what we have to share with other people. And what you said tonight, one thing that you that stood out, you said that as you walked out and that individual approached you, you said it's only each one person, and that's the story that I love to with everybody. I can't do it all by myself, because it's not a sign of certain people, but you said it tonight the best, and I love it, and I thank you, and I promise you, sir, I'm going to be looking you up, I'm going to be following you on Facebook, because you are one powerful individual, you have totally, and I got, just want to say God bless you, thank you for all of that that you shared tonight. Thank you for being here, my brother. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your your encouraging remarks. That's why we do this call. So thank you so much. I told you, Mr. 
Wade Randolph, the more guy, was going to bring it tonight. So we need to take about two or three more callers. Just go ahead and press star six to unmute your handset to ask your question or give your comment. Mr. Mr. Randolph, yes, this is Melissa out of Richmond, Virginia. How are you this evening? How are you? Glad to I'm have well, you on the show. I am very well. Thank you. You know, I just had a thought that, that just kind of uh, dawned on me after hearing your story this evening. And, you know, what I found out is that fear is the number one reason that people do not utilize their gifts. Mm, well when you seen. shared your story, you talked about your fear of going into the prison environment, going into the incarceration environment to, to use your gifts. But there was a fear. But you overcame that fear. And that is why you were able to walk into that environment and share with those men. Fear is the number one reason why people do not use their gifts, and that's because they're afraid to fail using their gifts. And I have been, that has been troubling me. That has been my obstacle for a very long time. But after listening to you this evening, and you said a few things in the areas in which I am trying to develop, one is my passion for writing, the other is speaking, and I realized on this evening, and you talked about it, the number one reason why we don't move forward with using our gifts and our talents is because of fear. Now, if this isn't confirmation for anyone on this call tonight, I don't know what is. But it's the fear that we have to lose. We have to overcome our fears. And the rest is easy. I think the rest comes easy after that. So I just want to say thank you, Stacy. thank you for hosting. And Mr. Randolph, are you going to be at uh, the Wednesday event with Mr. Brown? Uh, I am going to try to, but you're in my back door, so look me up on Facebook and let's connect. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. You are welcome, and thank you for sharing your feedback. See, your comments just brought it together in another context that everybody listening can hear you reiterate the point that Wade made and that fear you have to get past it and move past it so that you can share, you know, your gifts and let your life shine. So thank you so much. I think we can thank take you, one thank more you. caller. Oh, you are welcome, my dear. You are absolutely welcome. We can take about one or two more. I hear somebody trying to get through. Go right ahead with your question or comment for Mr. Wade Randolph. Oh, yeah. Hi there, good morning, Stephen from London. Hello, we can Hello, hear Ken. you barely. Hi. Yeah, I just want to say a big thank you to you, of course, Dr. Stacy, for hosting the program as usual. I came a, bit, a little bit late, so I didn't get the um, part that I'm on. I'm going to be listening to that when it gets uploaded later. But I just wanted to say to uh, uh, Randolph, the part yeah. that I caught first that really caught my attention what area am I supposed to be in? It's a question that I've been asking myself, and uh, I, you know, what I just, I was just, when I'm listening to your conversation there, just knowing who is the brother that I am supposed to affect today, and that's what's sticking with me. And as you guys say, that's my story. <laughs> so thank you very much, guys. I appreciate all this. <laughs> we love it. Thank you. We're we'll sticking to it too. Love it, love it, love it. You are welcome, my friend. And I'm going to be in England with Mr. Brown next month. So I'll be sharing those details as well. So we're going to have to connect with our folks Whoa. over there in London. <laughs> okay. Awesome, awesome. Okay. okay. So we'll you very much, guys. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So one more caller. Hello. One more call. I just want to say thank you to... Uh, Brother Randolph, still trying to catch my breath. I'm so so ready for for what what he spoke. I'm right there. And there's a preparation that's being prepared. So sometimes we need to know that we we have a voice that that has value to be heard. But I heard it. I'm waiting on you. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
My pleasure. And Myron, you know you have a voice, and we appreciate your consistent support here on this call, and just grateful for you, my brother. So everyone, all callers are muted. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, we want to thank you for joining Les Brown's Motivational Monday Night Call, your place for motivation and inspiration. We want to thank Mr. Wade Randolph, the more guy, for the amazing message he gave tonight. We know that everyone will be committed to making their light shine as a result of hearing this message tonight. And Wade, one more time, tell the listeners how they can connect with you. You can, I'd love to hear from you. You can send me an email to wade at themoreguy.com, W-A-D-E at T-H-E-M-O-R-E-G-U-Y.com. You can hit me up on Facebook. I'm the only Wade Moore Guy on there or LinkedIn. And here's what I say to you. I want to thank everyone for being here. But as I always sign off, you can always do more, achieve one, have more, because you can always become more. Let your light shine. Have a great night. Thank you, Wade. And listeners, if you want to connect with Mr. Brown, please visit lesbrown.com. That's lesbrown.com. Or you can join him on Facebook at brown.less. That's brown.less. And you can also find out about upcoming events and programs where he'll be, and we look forward to connecting with you. Mr. Brown is doing limited engagements for the rest of the fourth quarter. There's a live training in Orlando, Florida this coming weekend. If you haven't registered for that, you'll get to see him. You'll get to see myself, Dr. Ruben West, a lot of the Platinums, and I believe the more guy himself might be making an appearance. So go to lesbrown.com for more information on that event. Those of you who are in the U.K., we will be in London the last weekend, second last weekend of October. So that information will be going up on the site as well. And last week, those of you who were on the call, I shared a special offer I just released. And we didn't even release it to the whole world yet. But there was a little glitch on the actual case. Only a few people got through. So if you want the limited release of a very important How to Win series, with myself and Mr. Brown, you can go to destinydesignersuniversity.com forward slash win, W-I-N. That's destinydesigners, with an S, university.com forward slash win, W-I-N. And that is a special release offer that is up there with an interview with Mr. Brown and myself. So for those who were on the call last week, if you had difficulties and you didn't get to log on, I wanted to share that. But before we close out, I must thank you on behalf of Mr. Brown for your light, for your love and support of this platform, following him on YouTube, Facebook, his website, live events. This is his mission in life. This is what he is motivated to do. And every one of your voices and your stories and your passion matters to him because he knows there's greatness in you. So continue to stay connected, continue to be amazing. And as Wade said tonight, Go forth and let your light shine. This is Dr. Stacey N.C. Grant wishing you an awesome rest of the week and an amazing life. Bye-bye, everyone, and I'll see you again same time, same place next week.